Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video I'll be discussing with you how you go about, about predicting, predicting the geometry of molecules with multiple central atoms. Let's get started. If you've been following along in this series, we've covered a couple basic things. How to figure out the electron geometry of a molecule and how to figure out the molecular geometry of the molecule. Now, in all the videos and all the examples that I've shown thus far, we've been dealing with molecules that only had one central atom. But as we know, there are big, huge molecules that can have multiple central atoms. So how do we deal with that? Well, we really deal with it the same way we've been dealing with the single atom situation, single central atoms. And we just essentially treat each central atom independently when we think about the geometry that it would be taking. And so what we would be doing is we're counting the lone pairs, the Lewis structure, Lewis, um, excuse me, lone pairs and bonding regions that exist around a central atom as we're doing the counting. Um, so in this example here, we can see um, we would really have three central atoms here. We have one here, one here, and one here. And so for each of those central atoms, we can figure out the electron geometry and the molecular geometry to think about what the overall shape of this particular molecule would be. All right. And so if we think about around the carbon that's to the left, we would say there is one lone pair, or excuse me, zero lone pairs and four bonding regions. So for our electron geometry, we would predict that that should be tetrahedral. And guess what? Because there's no lone pairs, we would say that's also the same as our molecular geometry. All right. For this second carbon, we would say there are zero lone pairs and now three bonding regions. Remember to count that double bond as a region. So that would mean that our electron and molecular geometry, because there's no lone pairs, would be trigonal planar. And for the oxygen to the right, we would say, well, there's, I'll put it over here just to give us some more space, two lone pairs and two bonding regions. That would mean that our electron geometry will also be tetrahedral. But now, because there are lone pairs, our molecular geometry will end up being something different. It will be bent. And so when we think, put all that together, you can see that the actual shape is gonna end up looking like this versus this flat 2D structure, okay? So the take home message, when you're dealing with something with multiple central atoms, you treat each portion individually, count the lone pairs, count the bonding regions, and then you can predict both the electron and molecular geometries for each of the atoms. And you see something like such, okay? Um, again, another example here is shown for you with this uh, methanol. Again, this carbon, zero lone pairs, zero, excuse me, four bonding regions. So the geometry would be tetrahedral, and that would be electron and molecular because there are no lone pairs. For the oxygen, we would have two lone pairs, two bonding regions. So that means the electron geometry is also tetrahedral but the molecule, the shape of the molecule will now be that bent shape because that's the portion that remains once we draw it without the lone pairs. Okay, again, if we describe the geometries here for glycine, well, we have four interior atoms. So for here, we would say that the electron geometry should end up being, well, I see one lone pair, three bonding regions should be tetrahedral. The molecular geometry will be different because there's that lone pair. It will be trigonal, not planar, but pyramidal because of that pyramid shape. For this carbon, our electron geometry and molecular geometry would both be tetrahedral because there's a total of four electron groups, no lone pairs. For this carbon, Again, the electron geometry and molecular geometry will be the same, no lone pairs, three bonding regions. That will be trigonal planar, meaning it's flat. And then for the oxygen here with the two lone pairs 
And with the two bonding regions, electron geometry will still be tetrahedral and the molecular geometry will be bent. The beauty about this is once you've seen a particular bonding pattern surrounding an atom, the geometry that you would anticipate would be the same each time you encounter it. So we've seen this oxygen with these two lone pairs and two bonding regions a few times, and notice that the geometry continuously stays the same regardless of who it's bound to, okay? And so you can see the overall shape here, and I'll erase this just to make it easier for you all to see, we end up getting this uh, trigonal pyramidal. Again, these, these, what we're reporting here is the molecular geometry. What does the molecule itself look like? So we have trigonal pyramidal, uh, tetrahedral, trigonal planner, and then bent. Okay. All right, so let's put this all to test. We have H3BO3. And so again, go through that progression to be able to predict the molecular geometry. Well, the first thing we need is we need the Lewis structure, right? And so we know that those hydrogens are terminal, so they would be on the external portion between boron and oxygen. Boron is least electronegative, so that's going to be our central atom. And then we would end up putting those hydrogens external to those oxygens. So our Lewis structure should look something like so. Okay, so take a minute and pause if you are still drawing. Then we notice that we actually have one, two, three, four central atoms. And so you would have a prediction of the geometries for each of these. For that central atom boron, notice there's zero lone pairs, three bonding regions. And so we would say that the electron and the molecular geometry will end up being trigonal planar, no lone pairs, so they're gonna be the same. For our oxygen, and it doesn't matter which one you pick because they all have the same bonding pattern. They all have two lone pairs, two bonding regions, and we've seen this one a few times. So we know that the electron geometry for the oxygens will be tetrahedral. And the molecular geometry would be bent for each, okay? And so then the actual shape that we're gonna end up seeing would end up looking something like so. And I'll erase this, get this out of the way for you so you can see the shape. Okay, but again, you see this trigonal planner, the triangle, and then the bent pieces that are here. Okay, I hope this video helped you understand how you deal with assigning the molecular and electron geometries to molecules that have multiple central atoms. Make sure you guys keep coming back to see more videos and like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other content you would like to see. I'll see you guys in future videos. Have a great day. Talk to you later.